Like after most nights out, I awoke to find red stains all over my sheets. Only this time it was Gambit who had done it to me. Oh dear. Welcome to the eSports. Today was the semi-finals of the CSGO Major, but a lot of it was very much like day one. It's all been pretty well documented already, so I'll talk about the stuff that you won't know unless you were a VIP at the event. For a start, the seating. Is there a perfect seat? No. And there were no terrible seats either. With some, you'd have to turn your head a bit to see the screen. They were probably the worst. With others, you'd get a face full of those red inflatable balloons. Some were best for viewing the match, others for being close to the players, and some for experiencing the full force of the crowd. The most important thing I found was who you were sat next to. The right people will lead to a good time wherever you're sat. I watched a lot of the two semi-final matches, but I wasn't there for the moment that Virtus Pro were beaten. Instead, Marius from ESL was kindly giving me a tour behind the scenes of the rooms where the whole event is managed in real time by a large team of people. The one condition was that I couldn't film it, but if I hadn't felt like a VIP before, which I did, I certainly felt like one afterwards. And before you ask, the guys at the back of the ground floor of the arena aren't doing everything, not even close. They're likely focusing on the lighting and other stage effects, but there's so much more going on behind closed doors that nobody usually sees. He led me down to the lowest level, which is at the same height as the main stage, two stories underground. It was a lot to take in as he led me around a maze of corridors. Through every open doorway I'd catch a glimpse of people working on different aspects of the tournament. There were rooms for pro players and casters to chill. There was a room where they monitored Twitch and social media. I assumed to check for all those posts on Reddit when something goes wrong with the event. You may have heard that the lights got stuck on at one point during the day. This was a technical issue that they were immediately aware of, by the way. It just took time to fix. From what I remember, there was also a room which managed tickets, where a poor lone person sat surrounded with thick stacks of stickers or something. I even saw one computer running Sony Vegas, but that was pretty much the only program that I recognised. There was one particularly large room, littered with tables and tech and lined with monitors, where about 20 people were sat, managing the event itself in real time. I think there are two different recordings of the games as well, one in real time and one with a 10 second delay should they want to replay any highlights. There was a lot of stuff going on in this room and heat was pouring out. With 25 plus degree heat outside and dozens of computers inside, calling such a room was a losing battle, but many fans were present wherever there was space. A look behind the scenes. It's not something I really thought about, but the actual arena can seat more than it did for this event, but part of it is concealed by large black curtains. This is where the casters stand and the players and the presenters wait for their time on stage. I passed through a doorway into the back part of the arena. In front of me was the analyst desk where the casters stood, doing just that. Marius told me that you don't tend to see it during the matches themselves, but they all have their unique style of casting. Some sit down while others excitedly stand, dancing about. When you see this set on screen it looks so professional, but in reality it looks makeshift, as if it was thrown together last minute. There was very little space for the casters to stand. The screen behind it looked like something that anybody could set up and there were scratches and cables littering the floor. It was truly like a set for a film, and as if by magic they can somehow make it look super presentable for the live broadcast. Behind the curtains isn't as spacious as you might think, but there's enough capacity for two table rooms where teams prepare to go up on stage. I assume that Liquid was there as well, but I only remember seeing the Fnatic players. At one point JW walked right past me and might, might have given me a double take. Or maybe that's just what I want to believe. I'd like to emphasise just how makeshift it all looks again. Of course it's temporary, after the event it will all be cleared out to become a completely empty and whole arena again. For this major, there are no solid walls between the audience and the casters, just lots of long black curtains with a few sizeable gaps where you can see back through to the audience. It was an incredible experience that I feel I could have appreciated so much more if I had more knowledge of everybody's roles. It was truly overwhelming and a real honour to experience. I hope that what I remember from it helps satisfy your curiosity and can crush many rumours before they even begin. Anyway, I figured that that would be the bit that you were most interested in. Now for what my day was like. I was again recognised before reaching the event and walked with them to the entrance. It's like free karma, because I was only going to do it alone otherwise. But it's time I addressed a dilemma of mine. I'm well known on YouTube, and this translates into a lot of people recognising me at a CSGO major. What's an appropriate way to behave? From my point of view, I, and many other YouTubers, have been given free access to this event because they believe our presence adds value to it. So I feel obliged to be around if anybody wants to meet me. Mobile data and appearing vain scares me, so I don't use Twitter or anything like that to make my whereabouts known. So that just leaves me with the blanket approach of being everywhere as much as I can, both in the audience and at the events surrounding the arena. 
It was actually pretty funny in the arena itself. The security staff must have grown tired of my antics. They don't want people standing around when the games are on, but when looking for a seat I'd often be stopped to have pictures taken with people and the security would have to come along and order me to sit down somewhere. But I was beginning to think that everybody who wanted to see me had already seen me. By the second day, some people were already jokingly saying, you again, after having seen me two, three, or even four times. And although it was said lightheartedly, it did trigger my, am I being weird paranoia. Remember that moment when a liege team killed in the final match? Absolute confusion. No one knew what was going on. Could it have been a rogue aimbot? Mouse failure? A leash taking pity on Fnatic? We didn't know and you could hear the confusion in the caster's voices as well. I jokingly said that I'd make a video analysing it, which I guess is kind of what this one is. It wasn't until Vexy, who had been watching from home, told me that it was Fnatic having technical difficulties that I understood why a member of Liquid would team kill to force a round restart. It's a live event. Everything's confusing, especially if you're actually there. You're blind. You can't see what Reddit's opinion is on the whole thing. You don't always see the bloopers that are obvious when viewing from home. Being there in person shows a very different perspective. With so many monitors and displays in front of you, I assumed that it was my fault, not the organisers, for completely missing a round highlight. With so much going on in the arena, it's a lot harder to follow the matches and the strats being carried out every round, and I only have more respect for the casters whose job it is to interpret everything the moment it happens. The second night of the major was very different from the first, but still involved celebratory drinking. Fuck. Only instead of being in some penthouse, it was out on the grass, just outside of where I was staying. The circle started with just myself, Maxim, Sebastian and co, but as more gamers walked by, the circle began to grow, and grow, and grow, until there were dozens of us. Dozens. So, here it is. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> the drink I had bought the night before came in handy, but everybody chipped in with crates of beers. YouTubers and non-YouTubers came together and united, and we had a good time. Kind of doesn't make for a good video though, but it was fun. We walked around town and then all went our separate ways. I returned home with Nick the Australian, who's a real legend. Together we used hand gestures and bad German to communicate with the night shift guy in the hotel, who himself was also a legend. I then stood with Nick in the stairwell for a while and he explained his plans to build the best team in Australia and to bring them to the majors next year. Good luck Nick, remember this guy's face. The legend. And he is going to be at the next Cologne. Yep. Yeah. Cologne 2017, SSU Black will be there. Who are you supporting? As in like which country are you from? Australia, number as, one. As if your accent didn't As if it didn't give it away. No. We're gonna ride in on our kangaroos, <laughs> jump on that stage and give someone a run for their money, hopefully. Take him right in the diggity. Right in the diggity. 